Well, hello everybody, welcome to the channel. We are at Sand Martins Golf Club today. Paul, I've brought you here today because I had a very good lesson with Ben Emerson up here. Uh, a little while ago, we looked at the k vest. we looked at the um, system to see if there was a way in which I could generate maybe a little bit more power out of my game. Now I thought what would be great is if we can have a little look at your game mm -hmm. because I think there's definitely a hint more power we can get out of you, yep. potentially, and if you could gain another 10, 15 yards, certainly 20, off the tee, 20, 30, 30 then, um, then maybe you could um, elevate your game slightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ready, fancy that. Ready for the seniors. Okay, talk. right. Let's go and catch up. <laughs> let's go and catch up with Ben Emerson here at Sam Martin's. Let's go and get you into the the vest and see how you look. Let's go. A little backpack. Just mm -hmm. going to go through that and around. Have you ever been in a cave vest before? I think you must have. Done. I, I might have done back in the day. You know, yeah. you might have done the old one. Do you remember the with like ones. big white sensors that were Possibly. huge? Possibly. This wants to feel really nice and tight, yeah? Yeah. Can you breathe? Yeah. Just to... There you go, right, just clip that in. It's like a little belt. And belt line. And it's just going to go just below where your belt would be. Yeah. And again, it wants to be nice and tight. Yeah. Um, could go tighter, I guess. Yeah. But it's on. This one's just going to go on your lead arm. And then, like, if you look at the screen, I'm just going to pick the sensor. So. Like, can you see this lead arm sensor? Mm -hmm. And basically, these are just little Bluetooth inertial sensors. Yeah. But there's four of them that measure, and then we calibrate it for you. So don't panic when you see the screen, like, mm -hmm. you don't look like this. <laughs> Crikey, that's hurting already. Just yeah. Looking at it. <laughs> so there's one sensor gone in here, one sensor going at the back there. And Looks then... like another sensor going in on the back of the, the back. And then the last one's just good. Do you want to put your glove on? Do you have a watch or anything on? No. no cool. And then just feed that through. Had enough of these fly down the fairway. <laughs> yeah. It's quite an expensive bit of kit to go flying down yeah. the fairway. So then if I just get you to set up like you're about to hit a ball, so if you can get a seven iron in your hand, and I'm just going to basically calibrate the system for you. Yep. So if you just stand as tall as you can and put the club in either hand, just like this, so just like that, and just stand as tall as you can. Just gonna flatten everything. Make sure it's, so don't move, don't move, don't move. Cool. So if you have a look on the screen now, and do a little dance. Yeah, cool. You know so that? this is, yeah. <laughs> welcome to the 3D world. I've never seen you dance. No, I never have. <laughs> so let's get some shots. Right. Keep going. Yeah, let's just get a few more. It's a nice swing. What's the what's the miss? The miss is the miss is left. Um, and what did you what did you ask? Yeah. So when it so, and then the good one, just a good one is pretty straight. But yeah, recently the, the left is the problem and I just feel like my, my body's just not rotating or it can't rotate out the way of the, of the hands and the, and the, the yeah. arms of the swing. The, the hands are just flipping it. So, the, yeah, so cool. So if we, I'll show you this. It's like there are some really nice things in your swing. Like from, from a speed perspective, like if you look at your pelvis, it's moving like this. So this is basically degrees per second how fast your hips are rotating yeah. towards the target. Is yours are about average, which is okay. uh, the average amateur is 350. So you're bang on an average amateur, but you're not an amateur. You're a pro. So yeah. we'd expect to see these a little bit faster. Like I know we're not tall players, but you can see what tall player range yeah. is. Like and it's quite a bit more. So basically, mm -hmm. your strongest muscles we can get more out of them, yeah. is, is the whole goal. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the order that they're in is actually quite nice. Like, mm -hmm. it's, I'm seeing a nice sort of deceleration sequence of one, two, three, four, which is really nice. But actually, the separation between your upper body and your lower body, there isn't any. 
right. well, there hardly is any. Yeah. So like if you think of like the best players in the world, if you were just to, have you ever done this TPI test where you actually separate your lower body yeah, before? Yeah. Did you manage it? I think I did, yeah. Should we try it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you go into a five iron posture, you just yeah. cross your arms. And I want you to feel, can you keep your upper body stable and get your lower body to disassociate? It feels weird. Mm -hmm. As in, is that hard to do? Now try and do it without your hips going up. Like just try and get them to rotate around. Like you can do it, but there's a struggle mm -hmm. to do it. Why that's important. Like if you think of, if you think of like cracking a whip, I think is the best way to describe it. Like if yeah. you were to crack a whip, you would get the handle and you would, you'd literally, the handle will go first. That's mm -hmm. like the equivalent of your lower body. Yeah. But the power comes from, from the crack, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? If, because yours are very close to hips and upper body moving together. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if you took that whip and both the upper body and the lower body both moved at the same time. Yeah. There's no power kind of yeah. whip in that. Mm -hmm. Actually, for you, I think we need to get some, like you could do a lot of work in the gym to actually yeah. get your body better. Yeah. Back is being protected, I'm pretty sure, because right. back pains. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's easier if you think if everything kind of comes together mm -hmm. as opposed to having something separate. Mm -hmm. But the big thing for me is just impact could, could be better. Yeah. Like you could be in a better impact position. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit open. It's not as, it's not as kind of, flowing as it could mm -hmm. and i would i would actually get you doing some like proper kind of like whip exercises just to get the feel of the club like trailing behind you mm -hmm. as opposed to everything coming together yeah, yeah. because that was quite a good shot yeah and you managed to just get a bit of separation but that's not the whole story on all the others mm -hmm. like so that order that transition sequence is basically at the very top of the swing the first thing that moves is should be the lower body yeah followed by the upper then the lead arm and then the mm -hmm. club yeah on this was what's your good shot you can see the lead arm and the upper body kind of rode each other they kind of moved at the same time which means if you think of that whip mm -hmm. it's not the end the tip that's getting the fastest point like right. there's, there's a breakdown in there mm -hmm. so let's let's hit some shots where you're you're focusing on a little bit more on clearing hips out the way mm -hmm. And get your arms really trying to feel like there's they're kind they're of cracking lagging. a whip. Yeah, lagging they're staying or... behind yeah. as opposed to upper body racing ahead. Because mm -hmm. I think you you can do that. Mm -hmm. You can separate, just not well enough. And mm -hmm. like I would be doing a lot more stretches, okay. lower body wise yeah. first. So let's let's hit some shots. Okay. So this is this is you at the top of your swing. Yeah. Yeah. So we. <laughs> Haven't you haven't turned a great deal on the way back? As, hips, as haven't. in hips haven't turned a great deal. Upper yeah. body hasn't turned a massive amount. Yeah, we have just played eighteen holes. Yeah, it's, it's been a long day type thing. Yeah, but st I would expect to see a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But the difference between these two numbers is forty-two. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you think if my upper body was turned ninety degrees, yeah, and my hips were turned forty-five, that would leave a separation of forty-five. Yeah, you're not a million miles away from that, which is yeah. great. Yeah, but the bigger hitters in the world the best hitters in the world that number increases before it decreases right and if you watch yours if you look at that k angle there yeah. as you come down into the swing that 42 should go 43 44 45 it goes 43 44 45 and then watch it just all comes down together okay so in other words like this has happened if i got a if i got a I can imagine this was like a slingshot or, a, you know, mm -hmm. I'm literally trying to pull back and let go. You've heard of kind of like X factor stretch of like mm -hmm. getting that lower body to stretch more. Yeah. If you've pulled that back, that's you at say 42 degrees. If this is your lower body and this is the upper. But if you just, if, if that lower body was to move that little bit further sooner, mm -hmm. leaving your upper body feeling like behind. it's staying behind yeah. a little bit. So feel like back of the target, back is staying at the target that little yeah. bit longer. It would leave your arms time to fall down, let your hips time to get out of the way, and then it would leave that sequence to then catch up on each other. Yeah. Then it becomes really powerful. Yeah. Your bad one was when you've got that 42 degree stretch, so you've, you've got the, the slingshot ready, but then everything comes together. Yeah. All of a sudden, there's all that power that you've just had is just, it's been it's just gone, hasn't yeah. it? It's literally lost. And then you're relying <laughs> a lot of your hands. Yeah. Do you remember Tiger doing that drill like ages ago where he used to feel like at the top of the swing, his 
he used to keep his back uh, literally facing the target for that little bit longer. Okay. Just to let the arms feel like they're falling, but at the same time feel like lower body's turning. So if you do that, so if you take it to the top and stop, so if you take it to the top and stop for a sec, I want you to feel here, like if I was holding you back, yeah. that you're gonna just get your lower body to turn and feel like you're pushing me down. So the arms are falling mm -hmm. before your upper body starts to turn. Yeah. Like I don't want you to feel like it's upper body dominant. I want you to feel the first thing that moves is your hips. So do that again. So if you start here, now feel like you're gonna turn and your arms are gonna fall. And all that's doing is feeling that your upper body's help holding back that little bit mm -hmm. so then it can play catch up yeah and that, then the arms are trailing behind the upper body even more yeah yeah so like if i if i showed you with this is when it's been a really bad day <laughs> the old rope comes out but if you think about this like if you were trying to crack a whip yeah and you know like at school we used to get a towel and you wrap it around together yeah. and try and flick you would never have like the handle and the middle bit go at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like the, there isn't a, a whip in there and the yeah. golf swing is a whip. It's a form of a whip. Yeah, yeah. There is a, there's a crack and there's a stop. Yeah. The think of the stop is your lower body firing, yeah. clearing out the way, stopping. So then the next segment can then speed up yeah, and, yeah. and go. Okay. And that's the bit where, well, let's try it with this. Let's try and actually get you swinging with this for a sec and just feel like you're holding it back and actually getting the lower body to turn before you start that swing okay. through. Yeah. So it looks like this. You should be able to naturally do that without it feeling too uncomfortable. Is that right? Yeah. And it's honestly, it's milliseconds. Yeah. Isn't it? By the way, your downswing was 0.22 seconds, so literally a quarter, less than a quarter of a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any correction that you're trying to do is you've got a quarter of a second to try and yeah, do yeah. it in. It's not a lot, is it? There's not a lot of wiggle room in that no. for anything, is there? No. But if you get upper body too dominant, too fast, mm -hmm. it's basically, it's, unfortunately, it's slowing your hips down yeah, yeah. because it means that that segment's fired and yeah, it's holding yeah, yeah. onto the lower body. Okay. But it means you've just taken your strongest muscles and gone, Take, not, ah, not we don't need those. Yeah. <laughs> so a nice little drill you can do for that is, is actually, I want you to get this sensation that you've probably done loads of step drills over the, the time we actually get something stepping forward and hitting. Yeah. Well, the nice thing is you add a club out in front. As the club comes back, I want you to feel like you're already going to get that lower body to, to disassociate and to start before yeah. this club gets back again. Like I don't want you to have time to get to the top and then fire. Mm -hmm. that, that's going left all day long, isn't mm -hmm. it? So just feel like you're gonna take a normal setup. You can set back to start with, put one foot back, one out in front, and as you come past, step and go. Yeah, so I want you to see the club out in front, foot together, as it comes past, that's when you can step. I don't want you to wait to get to the top and then, and yeah. then fire. Stepping back, huh? yeah. So, as you <laughs> yeah, so, yes, all right. So, go, do it again. Oh, go back. So, or... club out to me first, and then I want you to as this club comes past. No, no, we're no, only going to go way. forward, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so as this club comes past, you're going to now step, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, and then change direction, yeah, nice, really nice. Go on, do that again, club out in front, go on, do that a few more times. Like you want to give yourself the opportunity that at the top of the swing, it's not aggressive, it's not fast. Yeah. It's, you've given your time for the lower body to just start to turn whilst keeping those hands going back. And this is a really nice way of doing it because in essence, because you've started the club out in front, yeah. it's got more time, hasn't it, to then change yeah. direction. Now just try and hit a shot with that type of feeling. Like don't, don't do the drill, just do, a, yeah. just do a shot and let's see what we come up with. Right, as a pure feedback, how did that feel? Does that feel it's like you used your lower body more? Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm almost just trying to delay the club. Yeah. Is that the right feeling? Whereas yeah. I'm feeling like I'm delaying the sequence because my, my, my upper body's going early, my arms are following. So I'm feeling like 
it's this delayed. is being delayed to allow this to open up more. Yeah, if you turn to the top again and start. Yeah. You want to feel that I'm I'm there holding you back. Yeah. And you, if you just slowly pull me down, do it with your lower body turning and feel that club is dropping. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Yeah. That's, that's the feeling, that's how delayed that, that club is. So at the last bit, then it releases into the ball. Yeah, okay. So how did that feel? Yeah, different. Felt like I can, I'm not gonna flip it as much to the left. As in, it was powerful, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, like really powerful. Let's, let's do that again, let's record a couple. Slightly delayed downswing. You can see your timing's there here at 0.28. Right. Still fast though, isn't it? If you think of like yeah, exactly. how quickly a golf swing is, oh, just, yeah, yeah. it's over. But the nice thing is the peak speed sequence has stayed the same. You've still gone one, two, three, four in your peak speeds. Yeah. So it's only, only that's the first, that peak speed is the one we're looking at, isn't it? The first one, uh, yeah. the 355. So but can you see that the sequence now has literally gone one, two, three, four? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Like that order for you is vital. So yeah. the first one is how they start. Yeah. So that's your transition sequence, like as in the first thing that moves. Yeah. The next segment, the one under, is what slows down first. Yeah. And on that one, the, you put the brakes on, as in your lower body stopped, it peaked, it did the fastest peak, yeah. it's crossed the finish line, and then it slows down. Yeah. That's what the best players in the world do. Mm -hmm. The other way, that's not in order. Yeah, so just by giving yourself that extra bit of time mm -hmm. at the top, just to yeah. allow your lower body to turn, yeah. arms to fall, like upper body staying back, actually you've got a better sequence and yeah, yeah. it's a cracking shot. Yeah. But that peak speed, that one there, is that the one that's under? I guess they're all under a bit. So yeah. it could go more, yeah? Apart from the hand speed at the end, yeah. Hand speed's quick. Yeah, yeah. Because that's doing all the work. Yes, so I can go to. more. You can more. go more softer on the hands to start with. So just. But a bit like what I was saying to Dan though earlier, like it's not. You want you don't want to remove hands straight away. No, no. You no. want body to move better, yeah, yeah. and then the hands can calibrate themselves. Because I do want you to have that sensation that there is there is it's you trying to crack a whip. Mm -hmm. That's that's what the golf swing is. Yeah, yeah. It's not everything coming together. Yeah. And especially from a back perspective like most people have bad back pain yeah. like it's hard to golf is hard <laughs> yeah, yeah. anyway isn't it yeah but actually like if you can get that sequencing right yeah you, you're basically trying to turn more efficiently yeah. which then definition means you're going to hit it better yeah it's an easy game isn't it it's just <laughs> we wish yeah so the question i got for you yeah is how much power has it actually lost or is he losing from the sequence of his golf swing um, and that lack of whip should we say into it's, the shot it's hard to say because yeah. actually yeah of course because if you think about it his strongest muscles aren't doing a great deal yeah so actually you put them in could be anything couldn't it could literally yeah. could be a club more easily by putting your strongest muscles into play but it's the it's keeping the timing exactly the same and it is, it's that thought that it's a crack of the whip, not everything moving together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's almost like losing control to gain control. Feeling. Yeah, the feeling that the club's going one way, lower body's going the other. That's hard to do. Yeah. That is hard to do. But actually by delaying it, look how good that sequence is. Mm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just by having a slight, slight time delay, yeah. actually you've got more time to hit better shots. See, that deserved a club 12. That was quite a nice, <laughs> was quite a nice shot. Do you see what I mean though? Same, same sequence again. Yeah. The bit that confuses most people is the, the stopping. Mm -hmm. It's like the ability. Well, yeah, the deceleration. To how you decelerate, yeah. yeah. But that is the equivalent <clears throat> of the handle. Yeah. It's the handle stopping, which then sends power up, yeah. up the chain. It's not the hips just spinning out the way, mm -hmm. which is what I think a lot of people think they mm -hmm. do. They don't, they spin, they clear, they, they stop. Yeah. 
next segment takes over. Yeah. And actually putting the brakes on is far more important for a lot of people than actually how much they speed up. Yeah. Like if you think of a car, if you had say like a Ferrari, so like you had Ferrari brakes and you put them on like a Ford car, yeah. would you drive the car differently? You probably would because you're yeah. safe in the knowledge that the, you've got better brakes on there that can yeah. stop. It's the same thing in kind of the golf swing. It's not always about acceleration. Mm -hmm. Actually, there is a braking pattern that happens. Yeah. And you've hit the nail on the head with that braking pattern. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Which means lower body's fired first, it's stopped. Upper body's fired second, it's stopped second. Mm -hmm. Lead arm, then the, then the club last. Yeah. But actually, you just need that tiny bit of delay mm -hmm. at the very top of the swing. Yeah. Just to feel like back is just staying at the target that little bit longer. Yeah. Just to let lower body fire mm -hmm. and your arms feel like they're dropping and hanging yeah. behind. Do that and honestly, you, you'd start putting some stronger muscles into well, play. Well, yeah, because I feel I've got quite strong legs, but I'm just not engaging them, am I? That's the but yeah, having strong legs and not doing anything with yeah, them just it's pointless, isn't it? means you look good on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my hand's caught up a bit then. Was that 355, was it? 350? 368. Oh, okay, so it is quicker. It is quicker, yeah. It is quicker. How did that feel as a shot? Did you feel out of control? Yeah, I just, I just feel like I'm, yeah, I'm really, really working hard and delaying, having to try and delay my arms because they just want to, they want to catch up and flick it, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of, which kind of adds up to why my shots are going left because my hands are just too active. They're too active. I mean, you're, you're gifted enough, been played golf long enough mm. to just have clever hands that can yeah. get you around a golf course. Yeah. But if they're fighting against the body, then yeah, there's yeah. a problem, isn't there? Because there's yeah. always a, a fight going on. Yeah. And, but the thing is, like, how quickly did you just get that sequencing correct just by holding it back, that feeling like you're holding yeah. it back that little bit, little bit more? Yeah. Actually, you've just, your hips have just gone faster. Yeah. Like everything's just gone gone up a notch yeah. whilst keeping in that same sequence. Yeah, I think the, the is that the carry the or the total's gone up by about five yards as well. Yeah. So once the thing is with that though is you're not you're not used to that so you're not used to the strike you're not yeah. used to where the club is it'll feel quite alien. Yeah. Actually, finding five ten yards for you shouldn't be that hard to do. No. But actually, it's not always about finding that distance as well. It's being able to have that in the bag if you need. Yeah. And actually, sometimes it's actually a case of holding back a little bit or doing the same as what you were, but swinging more in control. Mm -hmm. That's when yeah. some good golf can be played. Yeah. Safe in the knowledge that you could put mm -hmm. that little bit extra if you needed in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. as opposed to relying it. Yeah. But it's the caveat is doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. If you find power by getting upper body to fire at the same time as your hips, that's, there's, there's no crack of the whip. Yeah. How's that feel then? But yeah, something to go with there, definitely. Um, it's, it's in depth, isn't it? It's, it's very it, it's, in depth. It's stuff that you're not going to really see to the naked eye, really, unless you have a very good look. Um, so I think it just highlights there, you know, something that's happening in a quarter of a second, you're able to get some really good data on and, and see what the sequence is. And, yeah. and it all makes sense that, and it kind of, I know, I know we're doing this from a power perspective, but also from my accuracy and yeah, my... Control bad shot it's kind of explaining why they're going left yeah it's just my body's not active enough yeah and my hands are then taking over and if your hands take over they're going to close the face down so it all kind of makes sense what's so. actually really interesting is when i did this um session with ben as well there's a lot of similarities in what i don't my sequencing wasn't as good as yours but there's a lot of similarities in that we've both um we both use our hands a mm -hmm. lot to save yeah. shots that we play, and I'm absolutely no idea why or what we do with that. Mm -hmm. And um, we'd have to probably go back years of where we've played or where we've mm -hmm. gone from playing. I don't know, but um, or <clears throat> who coached us in the past, things like yeah, that. Maybe. You know, all the different theories that have gone on through mm -hmm. the generations of different coaches throughout the years of coming up with different ideas. Maybe that's been part of it. But um, if we can get you another, like you say, have have in the in the bank another five ten yards if you want it. Mm -hmm. It's great to have it there, isn't it? Definitely. As a thought process in there, in yeah. your mind with it. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to throw a ball, you would, you would go, lower body, upper body, lead arm, club, mm -hmm. wouldn't you? Like that. Yeah. You let go of the ball. Like we all have that instinctive 
thing from a young age of how to throw. Yeah. Like you would never go like that in yeah. a throw, would you? Like you wouldn't do together. everything together. No. It'd be really, really strange. Yeah. But golf is a strange sport. Yeah. And it's, it, we're, put, we're put in a different, you know, golf posture, which is making us hit down. So many things can happen. Mm. Like was that, and it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? The thought of hitting down on an object for that object to go airborne. No. So, so many things in your head are constantly trying to tell yeah. you this is not a good mm -hmm. idea. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. about to throw a club into the ground. Are you yeah. crazy? Yeah. Like, but actually, that's exactly what you are trying to do, aren't you? Yeah. Trying to take a nice little divot, trying to go down. Yeah. That's what the club is actually doing. It's yeah. going down. Yeah. Put a throwing kind of swing, that kind of whip into your swing. Mate, honestly, five, ten yards, easy. Yeah easy yeah so some really positive things there for Paul to take away and think about I knew that um, there was something within his swing that maybe there was some answers there that Ben could have for him and I know there's some power in there for Paul if he wants it some similarities than what I'm doing and he's doing which I, I absolutely put down to the fact that those are just what we've learned together over the years and kind of maybe even helping each other over the years we've just kind of gone down the same road um, but I'd like to hear what you think. Would you go for a lesson with Ben using the K-Vest to have a little look at your sequences? Down there in the comments, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all again very soon.